hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching full take so it's been long time i didn't create the update review of one and only my favorite custom rom for oneplus not 2 that is pixel experience plus on the 13th of august new update released by the developer circle and the team today in this video we'll see all the changes till the date that i found after the last video was created performance of the new update small improvement in the camera and finally bugs in the rom Next I will test this ROM for at least 2 days battery cycle with the gaming in the separate video that I will release soon. Keep in mind you must be on the latest TWRP on your phone. You can flash the TWRP image as shown in iCard video. Link of the new TWRP given in the video description. If you are on the Oxygenos 12 and you want to try this build then first you need to downgrade to the Oxygenos 11 and then flash the TWRP. So flashing is the simple first download the ROM zip file, boot your phone in a TWRP using the fastboot or the adb commands in the twrp tap install select the rom zip file flash it then tap wipe and then do the format data and reboot to the system if you are already on the pixel experience then flash the rom without wiping the data so phone booted now without further ado let's get started on the new adventure Phone booted with the normal Pixel experience boot animation. As per the change log, it mentioned that there is a monet themed boot animation is implemented in the ROM, but it seems that it's not available. After completing the setup, phone boots to the Pixel launcher. Now let's jump to the bot phone. This is the same Android 12 L build with the same material Easter egg. Soon we are getting the Android 13 base updates, so stay tuned at our channel to get all videos for the Android 13 base ROMs. ROM is updated with the August security patch. Another major improvement is in the kernel. It is upstream with the latest kernel version 4.14.290. Build date of ROM is the 12th August 2022. The major change I found in the current build, it is more smoother and stable as compared to the old build. After first boot, you may feel some lag or the jitters in the animations, but once ROM gets settled down, it works smoother. When I tested the CPU performance using the Geekbench test, without any performance mode, I got 835 for the single core and 2892 for the multi core. For the GPU performance on the OpenJTOS, I got the score of 5246, while for the Hulkan graphics, I got the score of 4395. All these scores are very good as compared to the old build, so obviously, this course reflects in the performance of the ROM, it feels more battery smooth now. Now let's check out the major changes. First one is the more refined game space setting. Under the setting and system we will get the game space setting which was already available on the old build as a game mode. But now it is more refined as a game space. There is a dedicated application also available in the app drawer as a game space. In the game space we get the new Danmaku notification mode which I will tell you next in the video. But first these are some toggles and the options like block, full screen gesture events, stay awake, lodge gesture etc. This option will help you for the interfere free gaming experience. Here I added the DRM info application in the game space. It just added to check how the game space overlay will work. Here we can set the default performance mode like the standard performance and the battery which can be later tunable on the go while playing the game. Here while playing the game or using the application we will get the new overlay which has the battery left time and the date details at the top. We guess the different overlay tabs like the performance settings, stay awake, changing notification modes, FS info, log gesture, etc. This is the Danmaku notification which shows the notification at the top of the application with the transparent background. I will use this game space in the upcoming video in the battery and the gaming test of the currently running build. In the same system setting, now we guess the OT update, so every new OT update notification will be available here with the full change log. We can also use the local update option to manually flash the downloaded updates. At the top right corner, we get the refresh tab to check the new updates. Now we'll see what are the small improvement has been made in the camera section. The stock camera didn't have much features, but the macro camera seems working in the stock camera, but ultra wide is still broken. So if you use the Gcam MGC stable bit, most of the features are working like the night mode, portrait mode for the front and the main camera. But the slow motion video recording is still not working. Time lapse working, panorama and the photosphere both are working. So here comes the main fix. Now the 4K 60fps is working in the main camera. Video stabilization is also working with the different options like the standard, lock, active and the cinematic pan. In the new build they fixed the Wi-Fi calling issues. In the previous build there are some issues in the Wi-Fi calling. Now you can toggle this setting and can use the Wi-Fi calling. 
Chrome comes with the Metlog application, so if you are facing any bugs, then keep the buggy application open and then run the Metlog app. And here you will get the, all the logs running, keep it running for the few minutes and then pause the log and then directly share it to the developers. It will help to sort out the issue. Under the display setting, now guess the black theme toggle. If you are using the dark mode, you will see the grey background in the system or in the application. But if you toggle this setting, you will get the complete black theme which will get applied to the whole system and it helps to save some battery also. Under the settings and the system we get the off screen touch gestures, it only works on the off screen so we need to first disable the AOD and then set the desired gestures and then use it. Like I am using it to turn on and off the phone torch. So these are all the features and fixes we seen if you ask about the battery performance it's still not tested but I found this ROM as the only outstanding performer in the battery section when I was tested it on the old build. It has some extreme battery saver option when the battery is running low but it has also some advanced setting to whitelist some essential applications when you are using the extreme battery saver. This will help to keep your phone alive when the phone battery comes to end. For current build I will post another video for full battery performance with the gaming test soon so stay tuned. So last question remains that what are the bugs in the ROM. The first bug is for the wiper for droid. It's only working for the speaker modes not working for the bluetooth devices. Second bug is when you try to enable the OK Google voice activation it will show you language is not supported even if you switch to any language in the setting. Except these bugs all the things are working. So this is all about the new update of Pixel Experience Plus for OnePlus Nord 2. As per my opinion if you don't care much about the camera features like slow motion and low light performance then this build is daily driver companion for you. So that's it for today guys if you think I help you then please do like and share this video subscribe our channel. Press the bell icon for the notification of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.